All right, so there's a new static site generator on the block and it's called Astro. So you might already be thinking, why do we need another static site generator? Don't we have enough of these already? And you might be right, but Astro does things a little bit different from a lot of other static site generators. And I think there's a lot of great ideas in Astro. So with a static site generator, for example, maybe something like 11T, you would be using these HTML templates, maybe something like handlebars, nunjux, or EJS. And that's how you would make your layout, your theme, and everything like that. And those are fine, they certainly still work to this day. But a little while ago, a static site generator called Gatsby came out, and they had a different idea. So what if you could build a static site generator, but in React? So a lot of people like working in React.js, they just like the whole architecture, they like how you can build components, and they like the syntax that you can write components with, JSX, it's kind of a mix of JavaScript and HTML. And a lot of people, myself included, really like working in React, and so building a static site generator in React sounded great. But there is one problem with something like Gatsby that a lot of people point out, myself as well. I made a whole video about why I don't really use Gatsby anymore. And my main critique is that it just loads too much JavaScript that you don't really need. So you could have a perfectly static website, like no client-side JavaScript is necessary. It's basically just a static HTML and CSS website and that's all it needs. But Gatsby would just load in the entire library of React and basically make your page into a single page application. There's no way to opt out of it. And like I said, even if you have a very simple website, it's loading in hundreds of kilobytes of JavaScript that aren't really necessary unless you're building something that's more complex than a simple static site. And so my main argument was just that it's not really practical to build a simple static website with a huge framework like React. But Asteroid here, it kind of bridges the gaps between those two, and it kind of gives you the best of both worlds. So you can make your website in some React-like syntax. You can make components like you would with React. Working with Astro is very similar to working with a modern front-end framework like you're used to. But by default, it ships no JavaScript to the client. All they get is HTML and CSS. And you can even write your components in JavaScript, or you can even write your components in React, or Vue, or Svelte. It has support for all of these different frameworks. But by default, it will just compile all of these to static HTML and CSS. And then it will only give you client-side JavaScript if you specifically tell it to. Because for example, maybe you're building a website for an agency, and the entire website is static, but they want to use React for this one single form. Maybe they have a cost estimate form on the home page that they want to use React for, but the whole site doesn't really need React. It's just this one component. So what you can do with Astro is you can tell it to only load React or whatever framework you want specifically for this component. And in fact, we don't even want to load it until the user scrolls down the page and comes across the form. So by default, it's going to load no JavaScript and it only uses the JavaScript that you actually need. Now this is great. This is basically what I dreamed that Gatsby would be. Because in my opinion, the less JavaScript, the better. Don't get me wrong, I love JavaScript. It's great for building things, but you should only use it when absolutely necessary. Because these frameworks are big and bulky, and you don't want to slow things down for somebody on a slower connection that doesn't need all of the JavaScript. And so I'm pretty excited about Astro. Now, do keep in mind that it is in beta right now. So you might be dealing with some issues and the APIs might be changing in the future. So just keep that in mind before you go out and start building all of your sites in Astro now. But I would still recommend checking it out just because I really like the ideas behind this framework. I think there's too much JavaScript on the web right now and I like what they're doing here. So let me just go over how to create a very basic project. I've just created a very simple blog, which is kind of like the hello world in these static site generators. So let me just show you how to set up a basic site and then a few of the basics. So let's go over to a terminal and we have a new directory that is empty. And to start a new project, you can just run npm init astro, hit enter, and it's going to ask you a few questions. So which app template would you like? If you wanna start with a blog, you can go ahead and it sets you up already for that. I'm just going to use the starter kit, which is basically just a blank page, and you do all the rest. What framework would you like to use? Like I said, you can use React, Svelte, Vue, Solid, or Preact. And let's just go with React for now. And you actually don't need to use any of these. 
If you want, you can even use vanilla JavaScript instead of a framework if you're really not doing anything complex in your website. But let's just hit React. And that is all the setup that we needed. But I'm actually going to close this out because we already have a project over here that I already started. And this might look like a lot, but let me just kind of introduce you to everything. Inside our source directory, we have components, layouts, and pages. And let's start with the pages. So we have index.astro right here. And Astro uses its own syntax called .astro. So if you want syntax highlighting for this, you're going to have to install an extension in the VS Code Store right here. So go ahead and do that if you want. But inside this basic Astro component, we have something that kind of looks like maybe React.js. So we're importing some components. And we even have some JavaScript here at the top. But like I mentioned before, this JavaScript won't be run on the client side. It will only be done in the build step. So the clients are not going to see any JavaScript like this. And of course, you can write any valid JavaScript here. You can write one plus one here, and it'll evaluate to two. And you can pass props down to other components. And so like I said, it's very similar to React and JSX. It's not exactly JSX. There are a few small differences, but they're so small that you can just think of it as JSX. Okay, but let's see what I'm all talking about with these components. So let's open up this tour.astro. And this is just going to be this right here. So this tour component is going to be all of this. And as you can see, you can write valid HTML here. There's this little markdown component if you want to write in markdown inside one of your components. Everything else looks pretty straightforward. But there's also this style tag down here. And you can actually write styles here at the bottom of all your components. And Astro will automatically compile this into one singular CSS file once the site is built. So you can kind of scope CSS to individual components. And then Astro will do all the work of building this up and making it efficient so you don't have a bunch of style tags sitting around everywhere. And what's nice about this is you can actually write it in, say, something like SCSS here. And so if you do this, then you're not writing an SCSS. You can nest things inside here now. And that's why I like Astro. They just give you a lot of freedom to work with whatever languages or frameworks you want. And so this is a component, and we want to put this inside a layout. So layouts are just reusable components that you can kind of wrap other components with. So we don't want to type this HTML for every single page. Of course, if you want to, you can just make this entire thing just a single HTML page, but that's not very reusable. So let's go back to our base layout. And we're also importing this header from the components. I made a little header component, with, which is just this logo and the navigation. As you can see right here, this is just HTML and CSS. Nothing crazy here. And so we're importing this into our component here. And you would write this like you would say JSX or React. If you're familiar with that, you would just type the component and a uh, slash here. And this slot right here is kind of like writing children. So as you can see, the slot will be replaced by tour in this instance. Wherever you want to put things that will go inside this layout, you will want to put slot here. And then finally, you can pass props down. So as you can see, we're passing the title here, which is my Astro site and we're accessing it with astro.props. We're destructuring this, and then we're just putting this as the title to our page. So you can pass things between components like that. But let's say we want to add some client-side JavaScript to this site now. So we have a header here, and let's say I want a random emoji to be right here. So inside components, I have this JSX file uh, emoji component, and this is just React, as you would write it any other way. And so with this component, we're just grabbing a random emoji from one of these and then displaying it inside this span right here. This isn't really a great example of client-side JavaScript because this doesn't really need to be client-side. Uh, you could just copy something like this and just put it in the header above here like this, put some JavaScript up here and then display it right here. But just for the example, let's make this client-side. And so the way we can do this is we would just import it into this header. So if we want to get the emoji in here, we would just do import emoji from, or we're already in components. So let's say from emoji.jsx, save this. And now let's put this emoji in here. And in order to render React 
just make sure that we have this renderer right here. So inside the astro.config file right here, just make sure that you have the appropriate renderer for your language. So for React, it looks like this. Let's close it out. Save this and see if it works. And as you can see, nothing. So that's actually because the JavaScript is not loading. And that's because we didn't specifically specify it to load. And you can do that. So we specifically want client-side JavaScript. And we want it on page load. So let's just say that. Save it. And now we have a random emoji right here. And so this is loading as soon as the page loads. But what you can also do here is you can have it only load whenever it's visible. So if you put client visible right here, the JavaScript will only load whenever this scrolls into view. I mean, this isn't a very good example because it's in the header. But say you had something way down here and you wanted it to lazy load. You wanted it to only load whenever people scroll there. That's a good way to save some bandwidth. And it's as easy as putting one line inside your component here. But as you can probably tell, this is a <laughs> overkill for making a simple emoji. So if you don't want to use React, if you just want to use vanilla JavaScript, you can just write it like this. So this is just an Astro component and we have a span here. So we're just using vanilla JavaScript to grab a random emoji and put it inside this span right here. And so of course we'd also import this the same way that we would a React file. Let's say vanilla emoji dot astro, save that. And as you can see, we still have our emoji here. But this script tag is actually just going to be right in the middle of your page. So if we open up our dev tools here, there's just going to be a script tag sitting right here. And that's probably not what you want. You probably want Astro to gather up all the JavaScript code and put it into one singular file, which you can do by typing hoist up here. And once you do that, whenever the site is built, it will automatically compile all the JavaScript together, minify it and all that. And as you can see, the script tag is no longer just right here in line. So that's how you can do things with vanilla JavaScript as well. Okay, and last but not least, let me show you how to create a basic blog. So we have our blog page here. Let me just show you how this all works behind the scenes. Close all of this out. And let's just open up, let's see. Inside our pages, we have a folder called blog. And we can put markdown in here. And by default, you can use Markdown here. You don't have to install some special Markdown plugin for this. And so you would write front matter like you usually would. You would write the title of the post. You can add a description or any other fields if you want. And a date here. And this layout is just going to be the layout that we want to use for this page specifically. I created a layout called blog post, which is basically just uh, the base layout wrapping a few other things and a style tag. And the front matter can be accessed from the props. So Astro props content, that's where all of the front matter fields are going to be. So the title, the description, and you could add the date here as well if you want. And that's how this looks right here. This is the blog post layout page I have here. But if you wanted to grab all of the blog posts and display it in this list as you do, then you would go over here and create a page called blog, or you can put this wherever. And you can use this function right here, astro.fetchContent, to get everything inside a directory. So right here we're getting the contents of blog and then all of the markdown files inside. And this will give you an array that you can parse with JavaScript. So right here I'm just sorting all of these posts by their date. This is just a JavaScript function to sort all these from newest to oldest. And then finally we're just mapping over this and we're passing each post to the blog preview component. And if you want to see the blog preview component, it's just going to be something simple like this. We're just grabbing the props that is passing us. See, we're passing the post to the props. And then you would just parse all these. You get the date, description, URL, title, all of that. And that's what we have right here. And if you're used to working in a front end framework like React, then you're just going to feel right at home here. You can parse everything with JavaScript like you're used to. And I really like the way that they have of laying everything out. And as you can see, we have a nice little blog right here. So the only JavaScript that this is loading is this JavaScript right here. Nothing else is being loaded. So it's gonna load a lot faster than something like Gatsby that has to load hundreds of kilobytes of JavaScript just to load the initial page. And like I said, this is just a very basic crash course to Astro. 
There's a lot more to it, as you can see. You can check out the documentation. I'll have a link to this in the description. But everything that you want to know is going to be here. And I guess the only gripe I could have about a project like this is maybe for most websites it is a bit over-engineered. Maybe you don't need all of this just to make a simple blog or something like that. But maybe for some small to medium sized websites with a fair bit of complexity, like I gave in the example, maybe a website that's mostly static but with a few interactive elements, Astro could be right up your alley. And the reason I'm personally excited is just because I hope this is the direction that the web is headed. Just because we have so much bloat and so much JavaScript being used when it isn't really necessary. And these tools like this that make it really easy to create a website without just bringing in loads of JavaScript, I really like it because with some things like Gatsby.js, I was hearing from some people, yeah, I know it's not the most performant, but the developer experience is really nice and it's just great to work with as a developer. And that's true, but you also have to think about the user experience as well. So you want to be sure that they're getting the best experience. And so very fast performant loading pages are going to be a great user experience for them. And with Astro, you don't have to sacrifice the developer experience as well. So everybody's happy. The developers get a nice React-like syntax to write their website in and the users get a very fast, snappy website. And that's why I'm really excited about Astro. So if any of this sounds interesting, give it a try. Uh, just take a look around. And yeah, let me know if you wanna see more videos about this. So now you can go out and build something cool with Astro.